What is Lord Ross's plan in Ninjago Dragons Rising? The Ninjago franchise has had lots of cool villains, but none are as interesting as Lord Ross. This guy is a humanoid tiger creature from the realm known as the Wildness. There's no other creatures of his kind alive that we see in the present timeline of the show. We don't really know his history, his family, nothing is known about this villain's background except that he works for a mysterious master who is all-powerful. So let us dissect, what is Lord Ross's evil plan in Ninjago Dragons Rising? Just a little warning ahead of time, this will include spoilers for Dragons Rising Season 2 Part 2, which leaked in late July but won't be coming out till early October. Lord Ross is introduced in Season 1, Episode 1 of Dragons Rising, as a little side villain who works for Beatrix, who was, at the time, the power-hungry leader of Imperium and the main villain of the first season. His plan was to capture Ryu, a little baby dragon that got lost from his colony. And there's still no explanation why he wanted to capture Ryu. It was a part of his grand plan, according to Beatrix. Check out this clip. So, this is the little dragon that is so important to your big plan, Ross. But after Ryu joined the ninja team and started living at the monastery, Ross never showed interest in recapturing Ryu for whatever this plan was. And even when Ryu was bigger and fighting with the ninja against Ross in season two, he didn't seem to care about Ryu or even mentioned that he at one point wanted to capture him. That plan obviously failed, but he had another one in the earlier part of season one, which was to have Lloyd become the conduit for dragons, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it. And this still isn't explained. So Rapton, who was the leader of the Claws of Imperium, a high-ranked military organization within Imperium that captured dragons for Imperium, although he was high-ranked, Rapton was actually under the command of Lord Ross. And the only person who was known in Imperium to be higher ranked than Lord Ross was Empress Beatrix herself. Ross had the Claws of Imperium hunting Ryu's dragon clan, and it seemed like this was a goal of his, because when he originally captured Ryu, he said this. You are just the first. Now... I'm going to hunt down your entire family, wherever they are. Meaning he wanted to find Ryu's whole clan, and so they found the Matriarch Dragon, which is a very powerful type of dragon. Not as powerful as the Source Dragon, but the closest thing to it. And it seemed like the idea was that the Claws were going to capture this dragon. However, Lord Ross never intended this to be the plan. In fact, he told the guards working with him just to watch what happened. And what happened was Lloyd got powered up and defeated the Claws of Imperium. Now, why would Lord Ross want this to happen, and how would he know this would happen? It makes no sense, unless Ross wanted Lloyd to become a conduit for dragons, eventually becoming a conduit for the Source Dragons. It still doesn't make any sense. Then, for the second half of the season, Ross is imprisoned by Beatrix because she believes him to be a failure, and this kind of represents the peak of her villainy, and he's kind of sidelined, only having a couple appearances with him in a jail cell <laughs> until he breaks out at the end. And then, through a flash back episode, it is revealed that he came to Imperium to help capture source dragons. It was a sort of deal that he made with Empress Beatrix, and in return, he helped her execute a coup against her father and pretty much murder her own father so she could be in power. And in turn, Ross would serve as her like right-hand man, kind of, and help her capture source dragons. But what does this help Ross's master with? We know a few things about Lord Ross's master, one of them being that he wants to dominate this, or whoever, I don't know, I assume it's a he, wants to dominate the source dragons. By capturing them, I guess they could achieve that, although it just doesn't make a lot of sense how capturing the source dragon would achieve that. But maybe Ross's plan was to have Imperium capture all seven source dragons and then do his thing. There will be nothing to prevent Imperium from hunting down every dragon in the merged lands, including the source dragons. Source dragons? Then the ninja stopped Imperium and Lord Ross had to escape, but he did find out that Jordana was capable of draining Source Dragon energy, so he took her with him for the second part of his plan in Season 2. With the start of Season 2, Lord Ross switched from being a side villain to the main villain. With the fall of Imperium, Lord Ross needed a new way to dominate the Source Dragons, and thankfully he had a plan, or his master had the plan? Because in the season, he keeps saying, your plan is coming to fruition. So it seems like Lord Ross is more so the executor of this plan, a pawn for his master, rather than just the person who came up with the plan. Although he seems to be doing everything, and his master does basically no work and just sits in the background and talks to Lord Ross and 
probably mouth feeds him information. He somehow gets access to this wolf mask army of these warriors that don't even speak. They're basically just bots. Some of the worst Ninjago villain armies, in my opinion, because they just don't have any, like, character whatsoever. Along with an elemental master named Cinder. And it's not explained how Ross got Cinder. He just had him all of a sudden. And basically... They had the upper hand against any opponents because they knew an ancient art known as Shatterspin. There's a special gong that if you if you use it, it will shatter the soul of anyone wearing a wolf mask but make them more powerful. And elemental masters who are wearing the mask gain the ability Shatterspin, which is a forbidden technique that uses overpowering strength to beat every opponent. And it was invented by the Forbidden Five, a group of five very evil elemental masters who were banished to this place outside the realms known as the Nether Space, basically a void, a prison that they couldn't ever escape from. And they were the inventors of Shatterspin, I guess. It's not really explained, but they were able to use Shatterspin without using the gong of shattering, meaning their souls were probably permanently shattered. So basically, Lord Ross's master wanted Ross to free these Forbidden Five and find a way to control them and have them compete in this legendary tournament known as the Tournament of Sources. And using Shatterspin, they would basically demolish all the competition and win and gain access to all the elemental powers. And we'll get to that later. So what Ross does is he goes to the Cloud Kingdom at the start of season two and take it over and use it to find information on how to undo the spell of the Forbidden Five. He would have to do it during a blood moon and locate the original spell, which was a skeleton named Bonzel, and basically destroy her and then throw five innocent non-shattered souls into the nether space portal, freeing the Forbidden Five. And so he does that. And the ninja somewhat are able to stop him because they learn a fighting technique known as Rising Dragon, which was used by the original dragons who stopped the Forbidden Five thousands of years back. And they're able to stop Cinder and stop Ross from doing his ritual, but he is able to free one of the Forbidden Five. And so the next step of Ross's plan was to train for the Tournament of Sources and compete in it, but have it be rigged. And Ross was able to get in contact with the uh, uncle of the head of the tournament, who hated his nephew who was running the tournament, and basically offer him a chance to take over the tournament if he helps Ross cheat. And basically, he rigs the games in favor of Ross. He sends bots to kill the ninja and some other competitors, which fails. And he also rigs the game so that Ross's team is able to get a strong advantage in the tournament. And eventually, most of Ross's recruits lose the tournament, except for one being the one Forbidden Five member who was freed, Noct, who's able to destroy every single opponent with his Shatterspin. And along with the rigging of the tournament that Black does, Noct is basically able to win the tournament. And it seemed like Lord Ross's next step in the plan was to have all the elemental powers. So basically in the Tournament of Sources, everyone who loses has to give their elemental powers to the winner of that round. So eventually the competitors just have like six elemental powers. And at the end, the winner gets all, but then they have to return it. But Noct decided not to do that. And that was part of Ross's plan. And the next step was to go to the Cauldron of Realms. I don't really know what that is. And somehow obtain dragon icons which are magical weapons that can summon source dragons. Without the proper icon, summoning source dragons is impossible. And then dominate the source dragons, I guess, for Lord Ross's master. And of course, Noct betrayed Ross, and we won't talk about that here because that's not really related to Ross's plan. But Ross's plan is kind of in flames. Ross, he's a smart villain. He knows how to manipulate people, but ultimately, Ross has failed his master. Now that we've gone over Ross's plan, we need to figure out what exactly his end goal is, or his master's end goal is. It's revealed in Season 2 Part 2 to Eren that Ross wants to undo the merge. And so it's pretty likely that everything Ross has been doing, from capturing dragons, to summoning the Forbidden Five, to access the Cauldron of Realms, is to undo the merge. And we found out that the merge was caused by Master Wu, from Ross, actually. So Ross's master has to be spoon-feeding him information about the merge because there's no way Ross would know that, oh yeah, 
Master Wu caused the merge because like no one really even knows what the merge is about. And so Ross is like the only person in the merge lands who just knows what happened somehow. And theoretically he was at Imperium during the merge, so it's very likely that his master told him. And once he undoes the merge, I think Lord Ross's master will somehow have access to all the power he needs. Right before the merge happened, Master Wu, the person who caused the merge, for reasons that we don't really know yet, he did say Only unity can save us. Separate. We have no chance. So somehow Master Wu might have caught on that something was happening within the 16 realms and found a way to slow down that villain's plan by merging all the realms into one. I don't know how Master Wu is involved with this stuff because it seems like Master Wu had nothing to do with these guys for all the main shows. So why all of a sudden is Master Wu involved? Maybe something to do with like the first Spinjitzu Master? I don't know. I don't know. And so the final part I want to talk about in this video is who is Ross's master? It seems like an all-powerful being. It was able to teleport the wolf temple to a completely different area just by Ross's command. That's amazing. And this person definitely has power. And the big theories that are going around now is that Ross's master is a source dragon. Why would one source dragon want to overpower the other ones? That's actually not clear. The theory is that Lord Ross's master is the source dragon of strength. Now, there are seven source dragons, although I think only six are alive. Source dragon of motion, source dragon of life, source dragon of energy, and we also know of the source dragon of strength. And throughout season two, Ross talks about strength a lot as the most important thing in the world, and that his master taught him that strength is the number one thing. My master found me and taught me the most important thing in this world. Strength. Shatterspin is an obsession with strength. Strength is important, but only fools believe strength is all important. Many things can be more powerful than strength. To manifest a physical form would use up a lot of my strength. There are more important things than strength. So it would make a lot of sense that Lord Ross's evil master is the source dragon of strength itself, because I feel like the source dragon of strength would care about strength, and whoever this master is might be responsible for the death of the source dragon of balance. It is revealed in season 2 part 2 by the motion source dragon that the source dragon of balance just died mysteriously. A source dragon's very life was extinguished. None of the source dragons have any idea how that happened. I think it's very likely that there must have been like a 1v1 fight. So that's what I'm thinking. There's no creature as powerful as a source dragon and a creature that can just teleport a temple. It's gotta be a source dragon, right? Plus, Lloyd being the conduit gets a lot of messages from source dragons and his eyes glow and he flies in the air. The same thing happens when Ross talks to his master. His eyes glow and he starts flying in the air. Coincidence? I think not. But I'm gonna end this video here. It's just mainly me rambling about my theories for Dragons Rising, but I really think Lord Ross is the best villain in Ninjago. He's better than Garmadon, honestly, at this point. And he's such a good manipulator. I'm so excited to see what he does in season three. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.